This is Coffee with Kerry. Each week we meet amazing people who are going to be challenged to step from behind their profession for a game show and interview whilst having lots of fun. If you're looking to inject more fun into your world, join us here every week. It's time to get on with the show. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee with Kerry and yet another brave soul that's come forth to step through the rounds with me of the crazy, the silly and not to mention the coffee. So it's great to be here and... Welcoming today's guest who is Billy Thorpe. Not to be confused with the Aussie Billy Thorpe, the singer, the songwriter and the record producer, but this Billy is just as famous, if not more so, let me say. Billy is the host of two podcasts, The Fisherman's Post, which is up to episode roughly 85, and Podcasting for Money, which should be sitting around 16, 17, something like that. And Billy has so many other achievements that he might share with us today. So welcome to the show, Billy. Great to have you here. Carrie, thanks for having me. So much fun. Looking forward to it. I'm just over here cheesing, cheesing so big. I'm not as exciting as the other Billy Thorpe, though. I just want to go ahead and bring the bring bring the expectation way down. All right, that guy was pretty cool. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Under promise and over deliver. That's the theory. Yeah, that's right. I'm just here for clickbait. That's all I'm here to do. Help you help you <laughs> downloads. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Thanks, Billy. Awesome to have you here. Super excited. We've got so many rounds to step through. And with that, let's get started. <phone rings> Round one, Billy, is the mug shot. So, Billy, did you bring a mug for today's episode? I did bring a mug, but I do have a sad story about a different mug. So I have this little dumb character I do called Larry the Lemon on Instagram. And I made this mug, Carrie, just for this show. And uh, it lasted for maybe a day. And then my three-year-old was trying to get something off my desk, pulled into the floor and smashed it. So I'm pretty sad. However, I did replace it with a Puerto Rico touristy mug since I am in Puerto Rico right now. So Mm -hmm. that's pretty good. Yeah. Poor Larry. Larry the lemon. Rest in pieces. Oh, that's so sad. I know. Poor guy. Oh, Oh, well, he wasn't meant to be. I'm glad you had the photo to bring at least. So that's something. Thank you. Yeah. Rest in pieces, Larry. It's all right. Awesome. And <laughs> and Billy, um, I brought a mug to today's episode, which is a little bit different. I don't normally go down this path, but um, this one just uh, resonated with me for particularly having you as a guest. And this is my mug. It's actually like a travel mug. I don't know if you can see what it says. Uh, I can't. I can't. Re- oh, I <laughs> say, wait, hold on. A cup of give a shit? Is that what it says? Close, mate, done? close. <laughs> it's a cup of get shit done. That's the one. So Oh, no one ever accused me of being a good reader, so that's fine. Yeah. And the other day, I, I confess, I opened this sucker. And I went, oh, there's not much space in there. Like, it's all that whole, like, oh, insulated yeah. kind of thing. But I went, that that's not going to fit enough coffee for Kerry. So, yeah, I just, like, and then I couldn't get the lid back on, which I'm not even going to try to do right now because I guarantee <laughs> that's going to go sideways. So, yeah. Anyway, Billy, we should do a cheers to the screen with our mugs for today's episode. Cheers. Cheers. Awesome. And Billy, you you picked that l- mug up locally. Is that just a, a locally acquired mug? You said. Oh yeah, just a, just from the old local Puerto Rican Walmart right here in Isabella, and it actually came with this little miniature tiny spoon. But it's so clinky, oh. I took it out. I, I guess it goes oh. right in the handle. So it's oh, a complete cool. set. Probably cost Not way much. more than it should, but I have a cool mug for for the show. I was so excited to. To be on and bring bring Larry the lemon, really. I, w- I was really looking forward to that, but you know, it is what it wasn't, is. Wasn't meant, it wasn't to, meant be. to be. Wasn't meant to be. We might see Larry a little bit later. We'll see what happens. Maybe. You never know. We'll see. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, <laughs> Billy. We need to step into the next round. I'm ready. And the next round is Billy. Five fun facts about you. Now, to get those five fun facts, we do need to refer to the numbers board behind me. And there's numbers 1 to 20 on this board. And you need to choose five of those numbers. And that will reveal five fun facts about you. All right. I'm going to choose number one. 
because it's always a good number. Yep. And now if she's number 20, 20. that should give me the full spectrum. Yep. I'll choose number six. Yep. And I'll choose uh, 11. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then seven. Gotta watch out, I don't run over my skipper rope here. God. All right, so we've got one, 20, six, 11, and seven. Awesome. Billy, we're gonna step into question number one. Billy, who is your hero? Um, this is a good question. I think it, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go with my high school like music teacher, like choir teacher. She was a substitute for, for a semester, uh, super inspiring. We, we recorded a CD during that time and uh, really like got my life on, on track to where I was going. So I would say she was like one of my heroes in life for sure. Mm, an, an early mentor figure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I didn't know, uh, you know, she saw a lot of stuff inside of me. I didn't see. So it was pretty cool too go through that process and be inspired to do more stuff in the music and audio space. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. So she is I my like Jenny it. Rogers is her name. My oh, hero. Shout out to Jenny. Thank you for being in Billy's life and, and the CD. What was the CD about? Well, that's where it got a little tricky, Carrie. So we had all these high school emotional, uh, you know, brainiacs uh, writing a bunch of songs and, I think I've tried to purchase every one of those that was ever sold and uh, burn it into a fire. So I don't even know the name of it. It was, it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. <laughs> Not to be revealed publicly, clearly, but when yeah, if you anybody said has it, any of those, I will buy them. Whatever your, the <laughs> number is. I thought you were going to say it was like. Um, remember back in the day we used to make mixtapes. You know, like I thought you were going to, but maybe it was probably <laughs> similar. I'm not sure. <laughs> probably were. Yeah, probably worse. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. Sounds like a good story for another day, Billy. We will move on to the next question, which is question number 20. And question number 20 is, if you had a superpower, what would it be? Um, I think I would fly. I think I would fly. A lot of people say fly. What, what, why do we all want to fly? Like, what is that? Is it the bird's eye view? I was going to say be invisible, but then that sounded really creepy. So I'm like, well, maybe I don't want to do that. Because then the question's like, well, why do you want to be invisible, weirdo? Like, so. <laughs> so why the flying, Billy? What what attracts you to flying? Uh, I think there's the ability to, to move quick, to go from place to place, see different things. And I think everything from the air is a little bit just different, different perspectives. So, yeah, that'd be I cool. Kinda, I kind of pictured you like, oh, I don't have to book a flight. I don't have to go through customs. I don't have to, you yeah. know, think about even packing my bag. I just go, just go. I can, yeah, do all the things really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just teleport. <laughs> Maybe even teleport if I could even Ooh. take it a step further. Oh, now it's getting fancy. Yeah, just teleporting. Just think and go. Just think and go. Why don't we have this already? Why is this not a thing? It's it's 2021. Like, do you remember being a kid and watching those future shows? And, and like here in Australia, we had one called Back to the Future and it kind of mm -hmm. depicted the year 2000, you know, with electric cars and, you know, almost like Jetsons kind of, you know, yeah. theme park type of lifestyle. We're now 21 years past that. I have not seen a Jetson. Like I, I want to see a Jetson, but they're just not present. I know it's like the closest thing we have is maybe a Tesla as far as mm. like self-driving, I guess. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So mm. probably. Ripped off from our childhood. Just going to say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. They put the expectation way up there and they didn't deliver. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Next question, Billy, is question number six. When you grew up, when you, when you were growing up, I'll get this question right one day. I swear I always stuff it up. When you were growing up, what did you want to be? Um, I think I always wanted to be the Major League Baseball player. Ooh. I loved playing baseball as a kid, and so I was like, oh, I'm going to be this Major League Baseball player. And then uh, somebody broke it to me like, hey, dude, five, guys who are like 5'8", 
don't play Major League Baseball 5'9". You're too small. You're too short. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's some short baseball players, but most wait. athletes are pretty tall. Wait, wait, back it up. There's a height requirement or, or rough average for baseball players. I thought that was in basketball. I thought you had to I mean, be tall to play basketball. They're probably just telling me that to make me feel better because they're probably oh. like, they just suck. Like, you're not going to play. <laughs> <laughs> they just not want to tell me that. Like, oh, you're not tall enough. Maybe you could go be a steward on a plane. All right, get out of here. <laughs> I don't cut the mustard for that, Billy. I am five foot nothing. And yes, I was never going to be the air hostess. I was on the ground at the airport, but I would never be in the air, which I was fine with, by the way. Kerry's short for a reason. The ground is good. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question is question number 11. What is your favorite song? Now, before you answer this question, this was part of the booking questions to come on the show. And you did you did give me a song here. Guitar Boogie and Stevie Blues by Tommy Emmanuel. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so Tommy Emmanuel, Australian guy, mm-hmm. plays the 12 bar blues in like this really crazy way. So probably one of my favorite songs to to listen to. And I so checked yeah, that out on YouTube from the booking Billy and I was like, oh man, I forgot how awesome Tommy Emmanuel is on the guitar. Yes, like so good. Ooh. I don't so know how good. he does it. Oh my God. His his yeah. fingers must be on fire. Like it's just ridiculous. And I forgot. I forgot all about it. So I appreciate that reminder of how awesome he was. But is it the guitar aspect that you're attracted to particularly or just how awesome he is? What what brings it? Yeah, yes, yeah, so I've played guitar. I'm 35 since I was about 15. I started playing guitar. And so I always, everybody was like, oh, cover songs, cover songs, cover songs. Like, can you play Stairway to Heaven? If I could play Stairway to Heaven, I'd be a millionaire right now because everyone asked me and I'd be like, sure, give me a quarter. I'll play it. Uh, But I was never really interested in that. I was always interested in like, like guys like that, like a guy like Tommy and, or, you know, somebody else like, um, I'm trying to think of another guy who plays like some really crazy guitar stuff, but like more of like classical music and just like more guitar composition stuff is what I was really interested in. Uh, so mm. I never played rock and roll or like, Oh, let me listen to the radio and go try to impress the girls. I'm like, let me play something that's really tough that not everyone in high school can play. So yeah, that's mm. where I, that was where that kind of came from. So yeah. I, I love, you know, I just look at those guys. And I'm like, how in the world, you know, like John Mayer is like another guy that does it, you know, yeah. super good. Eric oh, Clapton, wow. super good. Yeah. Like any of those blues guys, I, I, res- I mean, musicians are great, whatever, but something about blues is just like, what in the world? How did you figure this out? So it's mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, definitely classic stuff. So that is awesome. Billy, last question. Number seven is. If you could go into the past, what event would you attend? History is not my strong suit, by the way. I know. I'm trying to think, Mm -hmm. like, what would I attend if I could go back in the past? Probably Woodstock, maybe. I I was thinking that. I was thinking that. I'd probably go to Woodstock. I'd go, like, okay, let's go check this out. Let's see what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I thought, oh, that instantly came to my mind. Like people, you know, might go back, you know, to like the 1500s or the 1800s or something. And I was like, I- I'm feeling a bit of a musical theme here. So, yeah, that made <laughs> sense. <laughs> yeah, the 1500s, all that, like that's too hard of life to do. Like nobody yep. wants to go back there. Like, nah, no. definitely. Oh, my God. Could you imagine not having shoes and mobile phones? Like that would just be mm-hmm. odd in itself, let alone you know, all the other technology and mod cons that we're surrounded by. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Facebook goes out for 12 hours and I'm freak. I'm calling 911. Like, what Oh, happened? my God. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Where's all my friends? How do I connect? Ah, ah. Yeah, the world goes mad when social media goes down and we probably could put that into a bit of a reality check of having to go and hunt something to eat, you know. <laughs> like- I know, right? Like, I think of like when I was really young and we had to like do book reports, we had to like figure out information and my mom's like, go get the encyclopedias off the top shelf. And I'm like, that was so what? long ago, like to read the encyclopedia. Now it's just all in our phones. Like how fat, I mean, mm. it's just crazy. The amount of data and information that's at our fingertips, kind of scary at the same time. Yeah, exactly. I know we couldn't live without it, but at the same time, sometimes it's nice to 
well, I just think about unplugging. I don't actually unplug, but I, I like to think about it that, you know, one day I'll just like put the phone away and maybe have a week off. I just love to shut down email at the moment. Email is just doing my heading because there's so many, but everything else is good and I keep up with everything else, but I just don't want to look at that inbox anymore. I'm just over it. So, yeah. So you don't Cancel. check it on your phone all the time? I check mine. doesn't matter. I check it all the time. I can't stop. Uh, I do, but I tend to more use the phone for the social media and leave the inbox for the desktop. Like it's there and I can check it mm -hmm. on the fly, but yeah, I try not to because once you've read it, then it doesn't come up as unread on the desktop and I need that unread indicator uh, of what's yeah. left to do, you know? So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes try sense. Try to try. Yeah, it doesn't work too well. <laughs> we will <laughs> step into the next round, Billy. All right, I'm ready. The next round is Survivor Challenge. Recently, a good friend of yours was on the show and we decided to bring a new edition of Survivor Challenge to Coffee with Kerry. So I thought, well, you know what, given that you guys are, you know, kind of um, fellow bros on Clubhouse, I thought I reckon Billy's up to this as well. So we have Survivor Space Edition for Billy complimentary of captain sid so billy <laughs> your challenge is there's an emergency evacuation from earth to mars it's a seven month journey 300 million miles and due to time constraints you can only pack one song one movie one book so just those three things and you can also take with you two celebrities by name or by character, but you need to choose wisely because you are escaping in a tiny escape pod. So there's limited space in this little in this little thing. That's why you've got one song, one movie, one book. Maybe the song relates back to the question. It could be the same song. That's perfectly fine. But we do then need a movie and a book and two celebrities. Celebrities, let me say that. All right, so I'm I'm probably gonna take that same song because I'm mm -hmm. I'm digging it right now. So I'll take the same yep. song. I'll take the notebook for the movie, Ooh. just because just because I think it will keep me balanced emotionally. I won't mm -hmm. disconnect from like what what the wor world is supposed to be emotionally or whatever. And then a book. This is a tough one because I would probably mm -hmm. default to my Bible. I'd probably just take my Bible by default. Um. So, yeah, I'm trying to think of a book I would take because I don't know. I mean, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, and I watched Sid. I watched Sid's show about taking the journal. And I thought, yeah, that's a good. I mean, this is a good answer. It's a good book. You could write it as you go. So, yeah, either my Bible or a journal, I guess. Well, I actually I, I think I called it out on the show that the journal was kind of cheating because, you know, like I, and I get it, it. It was a physical book. So in the in the technicality kind of world, it was a. Semi pass, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's okay. That, uh, but or, Billy, or who's I would the take, two? Um, or I would take, uh, oh, what is that book called? I just forgot what it's called. Never mind. I can't remember. It's a, it's a book I never finished reading, but I've started reading a bunch. I can't remember. If I remember, I'll let you know, but I can't remember yeah. what it is. Oh, yeah. good to great. That's the one. I good always read great. it, but I get, I get so stuck into it, then I'd never like, completely finish it and I read it in parts. So I'd probably take it and just finish it straight through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And is this a, a novel or is this a like um, entrepreneurial kind of? Um, yeah, it's more like an entrepreneurial kind of book. It's talking yep. about building businesses and kind of looking at how companies have built companies and breaking it down that way. So maybe mm -hmm. wherever That's I was good... going or wherever I ended up, I would know how to build something by the time I get there. That's a good choice because you've got seven months on this journey to Mars. So by the time you get to Mars, you finish the book, you've watched the notebook, you've got your favorite song, and you can start a business when you get to Mars. Awesome. I like it. <laughs> but I Billy, can find who's water the... and sell it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who's the two celebrities, Billy? This is the tough part. Oh, the two celebrities. Let's see. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take Joe Rogan because he's mm. tough and he, uh, you know, like we could podcast together, I guess, if we could figure that yep. out on Mars. <laughs> yep. And then the other person. Oh, man. 
I gotta take somebody. I gotta take somebody really funny. Like I, I don't like Joe Rogan's comedy, so I'm gonna take Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart's hilarious, and he's mm. small, so he could fit into the plane. Good choice. Good choice. Now, question on that is: are Joe Rogan and Kevin Hart gonna get along? Oh, you know what? I can switch Joe Rogan out for The Rock, and then I oh. know I they would get along. It'd be even better. <laughs> And, and I see the compensation here because the rock's quite large, <laughs> but Kevin Hart's quite small. So really, you've got like <laughs> technically one point five people, but what equals two? You know, if you take a little bit of like, there's less Kevin, more rock. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we could just have Kevin sit on the rock's lap. No big deal. He can just hold him. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. So we've got the notebook. You've got your favorite song. You've got the notebook. You're going to take good to great. We've got Joe Rogan. Oh, no, swapped out Joe Rogan for The Rock, and we've now got Kevin Hart. So lock it in. Lock it in. Final answers. Cool. Done. Done deal. I think you're going to be okay. I think you will actually have a good time on the seven-month journey by the sound of it because, yep, there's a lot of um, good good laughs and, you know, entertainment there. I think you've done well with your three items. So, yeah, I think that's okay, Billy. I think you've passed. Yay. All right, moving <laughs> on. I love it, Kerry. Thank you. On. <laughs> now, I do need to step into the next part of the show. But first... Late breaking moos. <laughs> moos, not news. <laughs> so Billy, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say this out loud. You absolutely spoiled this because you already spoke about the guitar factor and that was in the late oh. breaking moos. Oh, 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 however, oh. however, another little birdie told us behind the scenes here while you were disclosing the guitar story that you know, you've been podcasting for a while. I think you've had quite a few shows out. Am yeah, I right? a few. A few. A few? A few. More than, more than one or two that I mentioned at the beginning of the show. Yep, more than one mm-hmm. or two, yeah. Mm-hmm. So how long has this journey been going on, Billy? I feel like there's an addiction here. Uh, probably since 2018, I think something, so not just a few years, oh, Yeah, I think if yep. I remember properly. Mm-hmm. And how many You've shows a- in? Oh, how many shows have I done? Yeah. Not many. That's the funny part. Like maybe. Really? So on the current show I'm doing, I have 85 on my podcast. Podcasting for Money show, I said 16, but I didn't didn't record some episodes, so I don't know, like 13, something, 12, 13. And then another fishing show, about 25, and then I had another business show, about 25. So really not that many compared to some people who have been doing it since 2005 and have 800,000 episodes. <laughs> yeah, but this is, this is like well over 100, and, you know, we're talking oh, yeah. like – we're heading to 2022 pretty quickly here. So we're in the three to four year mark. Like I think that just needs to be, you know, kind of really highlighted here that it's definitely something that you've gotten into and enjoyed and really, you know, you still, like we're all still finding our way with it. You know, I think Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that we ever just, you know, can set and forget. It'll always evolve and change and shift and like, look at this, what the hell? You know, if someone had said to me 12 months ago, you'll be you'll be in a studio with games and doing all this crazy stuff, I'd be like, no, don't be an idiot. <laughs> no. <laughs> so what does the journey look yeah. like, Billy? What what why did it start? I guess is more the question. Oh, no, this is a great question. I love it. So um I originally wanted to do a live stream uh fishing show to learn how to saltwater fish. So the whole idea was bring people on, interview them about fishing so I can learn how to saltwater fish. And so I uh, partnered up with somebody, went went into it crazy, grew this this live stream Facebook show. People kept saying, man, this would be great if you guys could do the audio as a podcast. So we listened to our audience. We did that. Uh, grew, you know, grew it super fast within 25 episodes. My partner and I are like, oh, we didn't really see eye to eye on a lot of business stuff. So I, I sold my part of it to him. And then went and did some other stuff. And so um, kind of as like a hobby and then kind of as making some money on the side, kind of like a little side hustle. And I didn't realize people didn't make money with podcasts. 
Like anything I touch that I spend more than, even though my wife says, honey, you got to find something that you do that you don't make money on. That it's just a hobby. <laughs> and one day maybe I will find it. But in, if I see there's a way to monetize, I just love monetizing stuff. And so when I learned, I get on Clubhouse in December of last year, so almost a year ago. And I just started learning that people didn't know how to make money with their show or didn't know they could. And so I just started to teach them like how to do it. Um, and then there's some pe people that reach out to me during a transition because I own a, own a business, a t-shirt printing company. And they just kept asking me, like, how do you do that live stream thing? Or how do you do that podcast thing? And so I um, started helping people there and then started helping people really dive into their podcasts at one point and really grow their podcast. But I really fell in love with helping the creator get paid to be a creator and get paid what they want to. Uh, to be a creator. So yeah, I'm doing that um, as of current coaching some people, get some coaching clients and then, um, you know, doing some clubhouse stuff, uh, just trying to get, get more people monetized. Um, mm -hmm. So that's one thing I'm doing. And then also I have a little project in the back, uh, kind of on the back burner, like working in the background of helping businesses uh, launch certain types of podcasts to get certain results for their company. So that will be launching. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, we got some discovery calls set up next week. So, uh, old Captain Sid and I are collaborating mm -hmm. on it. So, yeah, super I excited like uh, about that. So, yeah, hopefully I can stay in the audio video space for the rest of my life. I, I spent, um, before I created my business, Thorpe Creative, doing t-shirts and all that, I spent about 10 years working at a nonprofit uh, doing all this stuff, video, graphic design, website development. So, I've kind of come full circle in my nerdiness back to it. So, yeah. Didn't know how I would do that outside of the kind of work I was doing. So it's really cool that live streaming and podcasting has become a thing. Yeah, I like it. And I'm just going to go back to what your wife said about having a hobby that's not monetized. But you go to the beach, <laughs> like you're in Puerto Rico, mate. Like, come on. Yeah. You, know, you live on this amazing island. You know, I can just imagine what the vibe's like. It'd be like holiday mode every day and, you know, just really super chilled and super relaxed. So when are you going to monetize going to the beach? Because I think there's something in this, you know, I don't see, I know you're probably doing it on the daily now, but is there a plan? Is there something behind, behind in the gray cells there going, hmm, I've got to walk to the beach. How much, how much can I make out of this? And how can I turn this into a, another little <laughs> business? I think you're, I think you're addicted to business. <laughs> well, there, okay. So there's a lot of sea glass here in Puerto Rico, a ton of it. Ooh. Some, so maybe a lot of debris, a lot of sea glass. And so we go to the beach and I, you know, I get my little snorkel on and I'm finding sea glass everywhere. And I told my wife like, Oh, we should collect all this and see if we could sell it in bulk or whatever. And she's like, absolutely not. You're not going to pick up a bunch of garbage, sea glass and try to sell it. Uh, but yeah, you know what, but I've done stuff like that. And I, and I think people should try it. Like one time I went out, I got on eBay and I found out that you could buy pine cones off of eBay, pine, mm -hmm. like from pine trees. I got a ton of pine trees in North Carolina. So there was a bunch in my yard that I was procrastinating on giving, like picking up. And so I, I went out there at one o'clock in the morning and started picking up pine cones to see if I could batch them and sell. And I didn't sell any. I will. One day I will sell a pine cone on eBay just to say I did. Uh, but yeah, I'm addicted to the, it's just a fun, it's like a game. It's like a game. Yeah. It's like, oh, can I take this and, and make some money off of it and not really like working with people as a game and, you know, not trying to like, oh, how much money can I get from them? But hmm. how much money can I help you make? Like, that's a game. That's kind of like a metric a game to me to say, mm. you know, if I coach you on this and this and this, you know, when somebody calls me and says, hey, I just made $2,400 off a sponsorship deal. I just like write that down somewhere. Cause I'm like, how can I get people to make a hundred thousand dollars this year or 200,000 or, you know, so it's, I don't know. It's something, it's just like, I'm on a keto diet with my wife right now. Mm -hmm. Same thing. She, I hated it. I was like, I'm not doing this. It's dumb. I tried it for like a week. I, I quit doing it. Well, then she gave me this app where I can track my calories and track all this metrics. And I'm like, now I'm in now. I'm like, I won't even <laughs> look at a Dorito. I'm like, all right, if I can barely get to this number, like, here we go. So I don't know, maybe the, I'm a little too competitive. 
I was just about to say, it sounds like you're driven by challenge more than anything yeah. else. Like you, you would not care if you picked up a pine cone and sold it for, you know, 50 cents. It would just be, you know, yep, done. Like that That was a challenge and, and I'll tick that box and I can and get on with something else. So I think it's the it's almost like a hunt, you know, for you to actually yeah. achieve that in, in that space. But going back to the sea glass, oh, my God, that's a huge market, huge Huge, is it? massive, yes. I didn't research yes. it. No, no, and it, it just so happens we were on a um, – when uh, Clubhouse went down a few weeks ago, Sid and I were on an uh, IG Live and this person came on the IG Live in from the UK that actually does that. She scours the beaches, finds the sea glass. She makes beautiful jewellery, beautiful. I wish – if if I find the link, I'll pop it into the show notes for anyone tuning in, but – it's it's a huge market, huge, huge market and really sought after. So maybe just, you know, have a little chat to wifey about this sea glass thing because that could be the next, you know, Billy Thorpe creative, like I really think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, chat now. Sea glass is small. I'm going out there tomorrow. I'm just going to take a little bag, bring a little yeah. bag home, set yep. my little shop up here and just start shipping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I think in that Instagram live, you were even mentioned being in Puerto Rico and she was excited. So I think there's definitely something in that and yet another challenge for, for you know, do a trip, pick up some, ship it to someone, job done, job done. <laughs> job done. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yep. That'd be a lot of fun. I'll have to check it awesome. out. Yeah, love it, love it. All right, Billy, we need to step into the next round because time is marching on. Can you believe it? Oh. The next round is the Wheel of Reveal. Oh, God, I've got to go this way now. Oh, I've changed my studio. The wheel used to be over here and now it's over here. (laughs) There's a wheel back here. I don't know if you can see it. It's probably not super clear. but Yep, I can see it back there. The purpose of the wheel is that I give it a spin, it lands on a word, and that correlates to something that we need to discuss. So I will spin the wheel on your behalf because you're not quite going to reach it. It's all the way back there. I'll take my jump rope with me without all the papers. Oh, my God. Go away, papers. All right. You ready, Billy? I'm ready when you are. Oh, I love that noise. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. You probably can't see, but the word it has landed on is habit. So, Billy, I need to know, do you have a habit that you are struggling to quit, whether it's now or something in the past. Talk about challenges. We were just talking about challenges. There you go. Meant to be. Um, let me see. I, I'm sure I have a lot of bad habits. I'm sure depending on what kind of lifestyle people people have, they'll be like, yeah, dude, you got a ton of bad habits. Uh, but one, one habit I used to have up until like the last couple of weeks is I've been doing this keto thing, diet, lifestyle, whatever you want to call it, uh, was – I would just eat a ton of sugar. I would just like eat candy bar at midnight or whatever. Like, you know, I'd just sneak in. I love just food. Like I would get bored and I would just go bored eat. Mm. So that probably mm-hmm. boring, bored, bored eating, boring eating. Yep. Yeah. It yep. was pretty, it was pretty boring too, but <laughs> yeah. So that's a real, that was a real, that was a real problem. Mm. I'm a snackaholic and, and you're right. Like it's not, and it's not that we're bored, you know, like there's plenty of things to do. We've always got things to do, but you just have that moment of snack, snack. Where's the snack? Oh, there it is, you know. And then, but then I don't know about you, but if I have like a salty snack, like potato chips or something like that, oh, as, yeah. soon as, as soon as I'm finished the potato chips, I'm looking for chocolate. <laughs> yep, yep. I, 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 I never thought the, the salt and the sugar went together, but. I think since they brought out salted caramel, I can't help it. I have to have chips and then chocolate. Every, it's like stacking the whole Jenga thing. I just can't help it. And then, you know, one chocolate, little snack size is never enough. Then it'll lead to another and another. I might have a drawer full, I confess. There could be a little snack stash in multiple places in this office. The chips are over there. The chocolate's over there. Bad, bad combo bad Mm-mm. yeah i have this weird thing if i go eat ice cream which i love ice cream it's like a part of the thorpe legacy every dude that has the last name thorpe loves ice cream including my little three-year-old and um if i eat ice cream i feel i don't always because we don't have uh, this available but i always want a coke 
Doesn't matter. Mm. I don't even like Coke. I'm, I don't really drink Coke. <laughs> I don't like it. But if I eat ice cream, I almost have to have one. And if there's one around, I will drink the whole thing. It's wow. the weirdest thing. I don't know why, but I do. Did you have spiders as a kid? You know, when you put the soft drink in the cup with the ice cream? The combination have you had one of those or did yeah, you have that i didn't like kid? it though like root like root no. beer floats is what they call no. like what oh. my family called them yeah but yep. no i didn't really i didn't care of course i'm the kid that eats every and i still do this i eat everything on the plate one one item at a time and they can't mm -hmm. touch mm -hmm. i don't not wow. as much anymore but yeah i'm still mm -hmm. that way i prefer to be that for whatever reason i don't know so you're like the deconstructed kind of person. So if someone served up a lasagna, do you separate the meat over here and the cheese over there and the meat, like the lasagna? Uh, yeah. Not not quite to that extent, but I will like <laughs> pull off the, you know, like the uh, <clears throat> noodle or whatever that is and uh -huh. I'll eat it. I won't like uh -huh. necessarily chop into everything. So I won't separate it, but I will kind of separate it in a weird uh -huh. way, in my own way if I can. Mm, definitely deconstructed eater. I like that. I like that a lot. And it makes sense. I'm very regimented in the way that I eat. There's a knife and fork with so much as everything is pizza. Like I have to have a knife and fork for pizza. I can't oh, can't pick things up and eat them. Yeah, like I will. Like, you know, there'll be, be the odd thing like a chicken nugget or something and dip it in the sauce. But most of the time there's a knife and fork. And, um, yeah, the family kind of looks at me and goes, really, for pizza? Really? I'm like, yes, absolutely. Because I like to cut it up. I, I, I consider it my inner child that needs to cut it up into little bite-sized pieces like like my mum used to do for me, you know. So. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> that's, good, that's a good idea. I just cram oh. like pizza. I just cram the whole thing. I just twist it up like a taco. Yeah, put it right in. No big oh, deal. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, Billy, we've, we're we're at the end. We've come to the end. I need I need suggestions of new toys for the show because oh. I feel like it's getting shorter and shorter by the minute. I don't know if I'm getting faster or, or what's going on, but yeah, certainly open to suggestions from yourself or anyone that might be listening, tuning in open to suggestions we're looking at the show for 2022 and what we can do and change so completely open to all, all right. the suggestions yeah yeah i might have to make a couple of them for you hey what are you doing in here stop that stop that <laughs> what are you doing oh, oh, billy billy are you, are you are you okay billy hey Gary, it's larry the limit over here <laughs> yeah. i'm so glad i can be on the show hey don't worry you'll be fine okay Billy, you know hey, what? Larry. He pushed me in that cab. What's up, Gary? How are you? Huh? Oh, good, mate. How are you? Good to see you. I'm doing so good. You know, I'm so glad that you have me on the show. Billy put me in the cupboard right behind the sugar again. He doesn't want oh. the sugar, but he puts it in front of me, and I just chew on it. You know, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, I want to come say hi, Gary. I love you. We should do the Larry and Gary show. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. What do you think? Larry and Kerry with coffee. I love it. I love oh, it. Oh, yeah. You have to pour Ooh. the coffee in my mouth. I can't do it. <laughs> anyway, I better get out of here. This guy is going to go crazy. He's going crazy right now, Gary. He's going crazy. Bye. Bye, Larry. Oh, my God. Son of a gun. <laughs> oh Sorry, my God. Kerry. He, he, he fully, like, taped you up at everything. <laughs> he duct taped me. He did the whole stupid thing. I hate that lemon. <laughs> I'm going to eat him. I'm going to squish him oh later. My God. Oh, Larry my God. the lemon. I, I picture Larry being cut in half and put on the juicer, like, you know. Yeah. Rrr, rrr, rrr. Oh Immediately, my God. right after this episode is done, <laughs> I'm going to juice that little ass. <laughs> oh, my God. That is so good, Billy. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, go and get him. Go and get him. He deserves it. You just really, yeah, squash that. Absolutely. Well, I, I guess Larry the lemon got a new uh, episode idea for you or a new segment. Larry the Lemon yeah. episode. Larry the Lemon. He could guest appear on every episode. There you go. I wonder if he's got a mate called, you know, Ollie the Orange or something like that. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, Billy, thank you so much for being part of this episode. I appreciate your time. It's been great to get to know you better, not only for myself, but for all those that have tuned in. And yeah, good to have you on board. Thank you. Yeah, it's been so much fun. This is fun. I love watching the show. I love definitely love being a part of the show. So it's pretty funny. And um, yeah, Carrie, love it. And I love all your mugs back there in the back. I see a whole collection. So very cool. Up. 
they rack I'm going to need a bigger, I need another unit or a bigger unit. I don't know what I'm going to do. Next year's going to just explode. So watch this space. We'll see how far it goes and stack them, stack them, <laughs> something like that. Oh. And Billy, by the way, you and everybody else that's been on the show is invited to the Christmas reunion. So we have an episode planned for Christmas. We've got the recording booked in. So super excited about that and can't wait to deliver that coming into the festive season so quickly. Oh. I uh, know, so fun. I, I forget it's I forget it's the holiday season. It's Puerto Rico. It's like Groundhog Day out here. Same weather yeah. all day. So it's the festive I'm season all year round, twenty four seven. Yeah, for all, sure. Yeah, and Puerto Ricans, man, they love it. I'm surprised we haven't heard fifteen cars drive down the road with blaring music. So, <laughs> so probably lucky. after this, when I get to record my own episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Billy, I'm going to play the music to play us out, but thank you once again. It's been great thank to you. have you here. Thanks for tuning in to Coffee with Kerry. You can catch us weekly and I'd love to receive your rating or personal review. See you next week.